The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. An outstanding example, Lucky Strike. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And year in, year out, consistently, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Lucky Strike presents The Man Who Knows. Mr. John Cummins of Santhiana, Kentucky, has sold basket by basket over 79 million pounds of tobacco at auction. He recently had this to say. I've sold tobacco at auctions for over 19 years. In all that time, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine tobacco. Tobacco that's got quality, real quality. I've smoked Lucky's myself for 22 years. Year after year, independent tobacco experts like Mr. Cummings can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Remember, LSMFT, LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and fine tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, last Sunday, Jack Benny went out to Hillcrest Country Club to play golf, and on the seventh hole, he hit a terrific slice into the woods and lost his golf ball. But that was last week. So now, let's pick up Jack and Rochester and see what they're doing. Now, let's see. The ball came to the left of this bush, which means it probably hit that rock on the right and bounced off at a 30-degree angle, which would put it a... No, we looked there Monday. Oh, boss! Boss! Yes? It ain't up in this tree. Can I come down now? <laughs> All right. Look, boss, we've been out here all week. Why don't we give up and go home? No, Roger, we're going to find that ball. And anyway, what are you complaining about? It's good to get out in the woods close to Mother Nature and, and rough it. Maybe so, but if President Truman found out we ate that gopher on Meatless Tuesday, we're in trouble. <laughs> oh, I don't think we need to worry. They won't start another investigation just for that, I don't think. Now, let's see. Uh, <laughs> the ball might have bounced to the right here. You ought to give up playing golf, boss. It upsets you so much when you lose anything. It does not upset me. What about the time that you got the wrong number on the telephone, you didn't get your nickel back, you raised a fuss over that? You're darn right, I, I raised a fuss. Yeah, but it didn't get you anything. The jury was prejudiced. <laughs> Let's see, if I were a golf ball, where would I go? The ground is softer here. <coughs> Maybe if I... What's that? What's that? Oh, it's only a dog. Here, doggy, doggy! <laughs> hey, boss! I think we must have wandered far away from the golf course. Why? This dog has got a keg of brandy around his neck. <laughs> Oh, that. Well, the club had to fix up a dog like this when Phil Harris joined. <laughs> uh, run along, doggy. We're busy. Run along. <laughs> the keg must have a leak in it. I think. <laughs> now, come on, Rochester. Let's look over by... Oh, my goodness, it's 12 o'clock. I got to get over to NBC. Drive me down, will you, Rochester? Okay, but are we going to come back after the show and keep looking for the ball? Well, no, I don't think so. Then I better take down the tent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And don't forget to notify the post office we're going back to our old address, you know? <laughs> come on. Rochester, drive straight up Sunset to Vine Street. Yes, sir. It's sure good to see people again. Yeah. 
Shine on, shine on, harvest moon up in the sky. I ain't made no money during August, September, June, and July. I wonder if I should get a summer show. La, 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 la. Uh-oh, uh-oh, looks like we're running out of gas. Well, pull, uh, pull into that station on the corner there. The attendants seem to be busy. Oh, look, Rochester, there's Norman Krasner having his car filled. He never misses my program. He thinks I'm the funniest guy in the world. Hey, Norman! Norman, it's me! <laughs> He's wonderful. Honk the horn, Rochester, so we can get some service. Shall I fill her up, sir? Uh, two gallons, please. Oh, hello, Mr. Bennett. <laughs> hello. You might as well fill it up, boss, or we'll have to stop again. Well, uh, how, how much is gas, bud? Uh, 21 cents a gallon. 21 cents. Well, all right, fill her up. Yes, sir. Twenty-one. <laughs> Forty-two. <laughs> Sixty-three. <laughs> Eighty-four. <laughs> well, that fills it up, Mr. Benny. Shall I... Mr. Benny, you lose this collar, I'll go get some water. <laughs> I'm all right now. By the way, did you check the tires? Yes, and congratulations, all four of them are there. <laughs> good, good. Uh, that'll be $1.86 for the gas. Uh, charge it, please. Yes, sir. Your credit card number? 206BY. Your license? 7W046. Your age? 38. <laughs> well, we better get going, Rochester. Yes, sir. So long, Norman. Don't take any wooden nickels. <laughs> Norman has a great sense of humor. Now hurry, Rochester, or we'll be late. Huh? Okay, I got the radio in the car fixed. Want me to turn it on? Yeah. Now our next request comes from someone right here in Hollywood whose initials are D.D. D.D.? D.D. requests us to play that new number, You Do, sung by Dennis Day. D.D. Must be Deanna Durbin. <laughs> turn it up, Rochester, we'll hear it. more to 
give me three guesses. One will do. D. D. Could be Donald Duck. <laughs> no, he's in Washington. <laughs> Here we are at NBC, Rochester. Now, Rochester, I've been thinking it over, and maybe you ought to go back to the golf course and look for my ball. Okay, okay. Too many rings on your fingers, and Rossi and July. <laughs> Uh, you laugh at romance. Hello, you? Mr. Benny. Well, Mr. Kitzo. <laughs> hey, I haven't seen you in quite a while. Are you still working at the drugstore? No, no, I lost that job. And it was a little bit your fault. My fault? Yes, I'm always listening to your show. And on your program, the man is saying, keep your eye on the Red Bull's eye. Uh huh. So one day while I'm keeping my eye on the Red Bull's eye, yes. somebody stole the cash register. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too bad. I hope, uh, I hope you have another job. Oh, I'm much better one. Really? I'm now doing a little extra work in pictures. Oh, in pictures, that's yes. wonderful. What, what pictures have you been in? Well, I was in Dark Sausage, mm -hmm. uh, Mendel of the Movies, and Forever Epstein. <laughs> good, good. You know, but most of all, I like to work in westerns. Oh, westerns? They went that way. And smile when you say that, partner. <laughs> Hey, hey, you know, Kitchen, you're pretty good. You should see me on a horse. <laughs> really? When I'm on a horse, I'm looking like Hopalong. Cassidy? Who, me? <laughs> oh, well, I gotta run into rehearsal, Mr. Kitchen. See you again, huh? Thank you. And by the way, Mr. Benny, if you ever come out to Republic Studios, look me up. I will. Just as for Tex, everybody knows me. <laughs> okay, goodbye, Tex. Goodbye. Give me land, lots of land, near the star and skies above. They went that way. <laughs> Well, I better get into rehearsal. Huh? Gosh, NBC is a nice studio. I don't know, they keep it so clean and so... Hmm. I wish Fibber and Molly would stop waxing these floors. <laughs> oh, well. I wonder if Mary's in her dressing room. Come in. Hello, Mary. What are you doing? Oh, I was just reading the radio, Mary. This picture you hear on page 28. Oh, yes, yeah. That's the one I had taken when I was in the service. Yeah. Gee, you were handsome in that uniform. Yeah. Jack, whose arm is that around you? A fellow from the draft board. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't turn me loose till we got to Europe. <laughs> Say, what are all those letters over there? Huh? Uh, fan mail for our show. Fan mail? That's the biggest batch yet. Any for me? Yes, a bill from Lady Esther. <laughs> And Jack What? I got a letter from Mama, too I must read it to you A letter from your mother, yeah. eh? Yeah uh, What does the cure for the hiccups have to say? Go <laughs> ahead, <laughs> well, read it, Mary Oh, okay My darling daughter, Mary I would have written you sooner But I've been so busy Two weeks ago, your Uncle Lou and Aunt Ruby Dropped in on us from Seattle And we had to put them up In the little guest house in the back I hope they leave before Halloween as the kids always tip it over. <laughs> How do you like that? And Mary, it makes me very happy to tell you that your sister Babe is getting married next Sunday. 
Babe's getting married Sunday? This week will be a busy one for her. Tomorrow, she's quitting her job. Tuesday and Wednesday, she'll buy her going away outfit. Thursday, she'll have the final fitting on her wedding gown. And Friday, she's making reservations for the honeymoon. Well. I hope she doesn't oversleep Saturday because that's the only day she has left to find a man. <laughs> Mary. Quiet, quiet. Do you mean to say that Babella has... Oh, that babe has... <laughs> quiet, Jack, there's some more. Oh, oh. <laughs> Last week, Babe was helping her father weather strip the house. They were on the third floor, and Papa was hanging out the window while Babe was holding him by the feet. And now Papa's in the hospital. How, how did it happen, Mary? Read on. Uh, while Babe was holding Papa out the window, her ex-boyfriend passed by. They had an argument. And Babe thought he said, Drop Dad. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. <laughs> no other news will so we'll close. With love and kisses from your mother, Benzedrine Livingston. Nice name. <laughs> Yes. Oh, there's more? Yes. Tell Jack I heard his first three programs. Well. That was in 1932, and I haven't listened to him since. <laughs> Your mother thinks she's so smart because she used to be a Gibson girl. <laughs> now, come on. We better get over on the stage. Look out, Mary. Take it easy because these floors are very slippery, you know. Oh, I didn't have any trouble when I came in. Well, I'm warning you. They've just been waxed, and the first thing you know, you <laughs> See what I mean? Okay. Give me your hand, Jack. I can get up myself. <laughs> I hope Phil's here. Let's go in. Uh, we won't rehearse anymore, gentlemen. That last rendition was exactly as I wanted it. And before you leave, I'd like to compliment each and every one of you upon your dignified conduct here this afternoon. Now, you may go now, and I would appreciate it if you would leave quiet. Thank you. <laughs> Phil. Phil. Patrillo boy. <laughs> Phil. Huh? Oh, hiya, Jackson. Hello, Livy. Hello, Phil. Oh, you should have been here. We just got through rehearsing. I know, Phil. I saw the boys leave. And believe me, I haven't seen a crowd stampede out of a place in such a disorderly manner since... The horn blows at midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Only at the preview. <laughs> Phil, look, Phil, I don't like to keep bringing this up all the time, but look, for 11 years now, you've had that same bunch of, you should excuse the expression, musicians. <laughs> now, isn't, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And in all that time, they have never started together, played on key, or ended together. Now, <laughs> now look, Phil, why... Why don't you fire them? I can't do that, Jackson. I gotta keep them working. Why? I promised their parole board. <laughs> oh, well, I don't care what you promise. I, I don't want those guys around me. They make me nervous. My boys? Certainly. Oh, don't worry about them, Jackson. They wouldn't hurt a flea. I know. That's why they have so many of them. <laughs> Wait, Phil, I don't mind. Look, I don't mind if they stay on the program, but at least make them look presentable. You know, when they're out on the stage. Socks? Shirts, too. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's all I ask. Well, I agree with you, Jackson, but it takes time. Look how long it took me to get them to wear neckties. Well, Frankie still doesn't wear one. Well, that ain't my fault. I tried everything. I even gave him a spinal. <laughs> a spinal? To put a tie on him? What's Frankie got against neckties? He don't want nothing around his neck since he had that unfortunate experience under a sturdy oak. <laughs> what? I told him a million times, when you change the brand on cattle, cover up the old one. <laughs> but Phil, if they hanged him, how did he get away? Sharp Adam's apple. <laughs> Phil, please, look, at, I'm serious about your band. Now, look, oh, unless... say, Jack, I have a suggestion that might fit in about... Oh, hello, Don. What are we going to say? Well, I was just going to suggest that if you don't want the studio audience to see how bad Phil's orchestra really looks, I'll be very happy to sit in front of them. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, thanks. No, you, you've got a good head on your stomach. <laughs> I, I, uh... <laughs> 
really, I appreciate it. But, oh, Jack, in, in one way, I think you're very lucky. Lucky? What do you mean, Don? Well, since you're stuck with Phil's band, you can take consolation in the fact that you do have a great quartet. Yes, Don, at least they... What? You mean the sportsmen? Yeah. And, Jack, since next Friday is Halloween, I thought it would be appropriate if the boys did something in the Halloween spirit and you can join in. Me? Yeah, sure. Oh, that'll be a lot of fun. What's the name of the number, Don? Well, it's called the Ghost Dance. The Ghost Dance? Say, that is good for Halloween. Come on, let's run through it. Okay, take it, boys. L S M F T. the goblins who know where the warm breezes blow when tobacco leaves grow lsmft that's the smoke for me so take a tip from a ghost use tobacco they toast it's the one you like most of all <laughs> then me is the smoke what Before you get frightened, you'd better start lighting the lucky, and then you can go. We are the goblins who know how to louse up your show. Come on, kids, let us go right out on the street to play trick or treat. Now, if you'll hand us our broom, we'll be leaving here soon and go haunting for F. E. Boom. time, I must give the boys credit. They really prepared something great. Really, it was very good. It scared me silly. Huh? <laughs> oh, oh, hello, Dennis. Uh, what made you late? Oh, I happened to be standing in the doorway when Phil dismissed his boys. Oh. The next thing I knew, I was in the bar across the street. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Phil's boys are a little rough. Yeah, they tied me up, threw me on the ground, and stuck a hot iron on me. <laughs> Dennis, stop being silly. If they tied you up, how'd you get away? Sharp shoulder blades. <laughs> Dennis, what's the matter with you? Coming in here with jokes like that, you sound like Jerry Colonna. How can you do things like that? I don't ask questions. I just have fun. Now cut that up! <laughs> Jerry Colonna. Say, Jack, that reminds me. Did you read about Bob Hope going to England to do a command performance? Yes, yes. You know, that ought to be exciting, being in England at this time. Oh, by the way, Jack, did you get a reply to the letter you wrote King George regarding the royal wedding? Yes, yes, but he said they wanted a whole orchestra, not just a violin. <laughs> <laughs> I can't understand. I was willing to go just for expenses. <laughs> you know, Mary, I was thinking, it must take a lot of planning to get married in England with the shortages and everything. I mean, even for a princess. Why doesn't she get married on the bride and groom program and get a mix master? <laughs> Dennis. Dennis, are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? Princess Elizabeth is of royal blood. Her father is the king of England. Her grandfather was the king of England. Her great-grandfather was the king of England. A mix master is a mix master. <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake. Jack, put down that branding iron. Well, he drives me nuts. Now, let's sit down and get this rehearsal started. Jack, you're acting awfully irritable lately. Oh, he's been like that ever since last Sunday when he lost that golf ball. Well, Mary, that was a new golf ball. I only hit it once. Go on, you lost it on the seventh hole. I still only hit it once. <laughs> I'm going to call up the country club right now and see if Rochester found it. Hand me that phone, Mary. Here you are. Thanks. Oh, Maple, what is it, Guy Truth? <laughs> Mr. Benny's line is flashing. Yeah, I wonder what Temptation wants now. <laughs> I'll plug in and see. Hello? Yes, Mr. Benny, I'll do it. He wants me to get the Hillcrest Country Club. 
You know, he lost a golf ball there last Sunday. And what a thing he made over it. I know, he came in today wearing a black band on his sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and speaking of golf, you should have seen what happened to me when I used to go out with Mr. Benny. I'm listening. <laughs> out to a driving range. I didn't know he was such a rotten golfer, so I let him drive a ball off my nose. You did? Yeah, and was I sorry. Oh, my goodness, did he hit your nose? No, but he broke my mother's leg. <laughs> I wondered why I missed her at the Palladium. <laughs> trying to get them, Mr. Benny. Well, you don't have to get so excited. What? That's no way to talk to a lady. What'd he say? What'd he say? What'd he say? Quiet. He's still insulting me. <laughs> Are you through, Mr. Benny? Are you through? <laughs> one of his riders with him. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Benny, but the line is busy. Operator, operator, Gertrude, Snooksy. Hmm. Oh, well, if Rochester found the ball, I guess he would have called me. Gee, maybe I was too harsh on Gertrude. After all, she and Mabel just sit there in that little room by themselves all day long. I wonder what they talk about. Well, I guess it's none of my business. Come on, kids. Let's get on with the rehearsal. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. L-S-M-F-T. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. Remember what happens at the tobacco auctions? At, the American. At, at auction after auction, year after year, independent tobacco experts can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. American. Lucky Strike presents the man who knows, Mr. Fred Leonard Evans, independent tobacco buyer of Danville, Virginia, who has attended more than 3,000 auctions. A recognized authority on tobacco, Mr. Evans said, At every auction I've attended, year after year, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine quality leaf. That fine, ripe, mellow tobacco you can't beat for top smoking quality. I've smoked Luckers myself for 19 years. So for your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, remember, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. First, last, always. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Be with us next Sunday. Good night, folks. The National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> <laughs>